I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Woo! Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Red House Lives of Beverly Hills After Show here at AfterBuzz TV. Today, we are really, really excited because we have a very special guest joining us to dish all about episode eight, as well as the she about some, you know, housewife stuff, some questions we're gonna dig out of her. Um, <laughs> I cannot do this all by myself. I have with me fabulous Ethan Paisley. Hi there, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, and then we also have Laura Thomas-san. Hi, everybody. So happy to be here. It's been forever. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. And we have Jane Johnson. What's up, guys? We missed you. Yes. And then drum roll, please. We have Sutton Strack with us. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much, Sutton, for being here today with us to chat all about one of our favorite shows, reality TV shows, which is The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We are so thrilled that you're able to chat with us about this episode. Um, I do want to give a formal introduction because there's something that I read and I think this is worthy, really worthy of an introduction. Okay. So Sutton is a Southern debutante turned Beverly Hills socialite who was named, hear this, a top party host in America. <laughs> <laughs> alongside Oprah and Michelle Obama. I keep good company, what can I say? Hello, we need to be invited to one of these dinner parties for sure. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put you on the list. Yes. <laughs> and for those that don't know and are watching, Sutton Marks, one of the newest cast members of this franchise of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and has definitely stirred up the drama so far this season. We are discussing all about episode eight and we really did get a great introduction to you and you did stir some feathers definitely in the very beginning of the episode and we chatted a lot here about that. So if you haven't tuned into that, please do so go back to some of our previous um, after shows discussions for all of the rest of the episodes. Um, we also have a really fun game coming up later on in our show. And so let's let's just dive in and start talking about episode eight. Uh, I myself had to go back and rewatch the episode because of course we've been, you know, kind of MIA with everything that has been happening. And so, you know, out of respect for everyone and everything that has surrounded our country, um, we, you know, have been focusing more on that. So I did have to go a little bit back and rewatch the episode. I don't know if any of you did, but you know, it was interesting to kind of see it for the second time. Um, so let's start off talking about Garcelle. She is being honored, receiving an award for her, for her work with the LA Mission. And on the way to the ceremony, Rena shares a car ride with her. And Garcelle mentions that she, you know, admits that Kyle is a bit shallow. You know, she just puts it out there. And so in the middle of this, um, of this uh, ride to the awards ceremony, um, you know, Garcelle was being honored and she goes up on stage right in the middle of her stage of her speech. She admits, right, and says that she's not really friends. She gives a shout out to the table of her friends and says, you know what, one of you out there really isn't a friend of mine. So I wanna pose the question out there. Um, what did we think about the shade Garcelle threw specifically to Kyle in the middle of her speech. Uh, Ethan, do you wanna take it away? Sure, why do I feel like that was written in the speech before she gave it? Like she was almost planning to throw some shade just cause she knew cameras would be rolling. Because I don't think if cameras weren't there that she would say those words. I mean, it seems like the drama between them is a little artificial and I can't really trace back to where it started. So I feel like this is something Garcelle's created. Huh. Ooh, I'm gonna jump in on that because I actually got the opposite impression and I get the opposite impression. I feel like every time I see Garcelle, which is, I feel like I always, um, I'm so refreshed by how just um, transparent she seems. I feel like she just speaks her mind, doesn't really matter, you know, but not in, a, in an abrasive way, just kind of a like, no, nope, this is what I think, take it or leave it kind of manner. And so, you know, it to me, it seemed like a really authentic moment when she, because 
I don't know. For me, like I, and on the other end, I actually think that Kyle is the one that always seems calculated and every, everything that comes out of her mouth feels a little more scripted and feels a little more, like we've said all season long, a little produced. And so for me, Garcelle is sort of the antithesis of that. And when I saw her giving her speech, it was really um, touching to see her talk about her, her kids in a really great way and talk about um, her, you know, the mission and how much it means to her. And so for me, when she kind of threw that, when she's like, send me on, not so much, you know, like I thought it was kind of a refreshing moment where I was like, oh, I can't believe she went there, but she went there and that's what she thinks. So I don't know. What yeah, I, hmm? What's I would say at that event, is that the appropriate thing to say? <laughs> <laughs> on Real Housewives it is. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I think she said it. I I, I like the look. I thought she said it because I was in the restroom. <gasps> oh, oh. Right. <laughs> in her speech, right? I, well, I actually, I think Erica and I walked in the door as she was making her speech. We did not know that she, her speech was about to come up. So don't believe everything that you see. But I really, when I heard it, I was like, oh gosh, I think she's talking about me because I'm not sitting at the table. So oh. Oh. she made that clear later. She made it clear later that it was definitely um, at Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny that you, you thought it was directed at you. I, I, it's funny because I feel like when the show came out and Garcelle was first on watch what happens live and she gave Kyle a little bit of shade and then, and then we kind of saw that there was apparently drama between them that had been brewing under the scenes that Kyle acted like she wasn't necessarily aware of. Now seeing this, I'm like, how did Kyle not know that Garcelle was kind of spewing a little bit of sass towards her? So I don't know. I'm curious about that in general. And I'm wondering like, like, Sutton, since we have you here, did did Kyle really not know that there was anything brewing between her and Garcelle, drama wise? I, I'm going to be really honest here. I did. I never saw. I never saw any animosity between the, the two. Mm. Yeah, I saw so that interesting. when you start watching it. You never I was like, "What is she talking about?" I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see it. I didn't ever how. I was like, what? I mean, we were all, we all were talking. We all were getting to know each other. And I don't think that, I, I, di I didn't understand where it came from, from Garcelle. That was just my personal point of view. I thought mm -hmm. Kyle was lovely to everybody, to both of us, especially being new. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that from Garcelle. We'll have to talk about that later. It does kind of seem like a lot of the drama stems from Garcelle's like separate interviews about Kyle and a lot of the shade thrown in this scene, especially was like in those off camera, just interview moments. So yeah. it is, it is interesting to mm -hmm. see it all play out. It's interesting too, because she singles out Kyle and you know, she doesn't have anything to say about anybody else. Um, and then after she received that award for that episode, Garcelle takes that opportunity to call out Kyle, right, for being a fake friend. And so Kyle doesn't really understand where that's coming from. Uh, Sutton, did you, what did you think during that moment when this was all happening? Um, did you, were you thinking to yourself the approach that, Ky how Kyle had approached you when you first joined the show? I, well, one thing at that point, Garcelle hadn't been there a lot. Right. So there wasn't a lot of opportunity to, so it was sort of like, why are you, what? Just calm down and enjoy <laughs> to know everybody because it's, it's hard to get to know all those ladies. And the truth is she wasn't there. She was busy and she was working on her movie and like everybody's so understanding of working and all of that. So it, it was, I thought a little unfair on Garcelle's part because I think that, um, it just, it takes time to really get to know these girls. It does. They're not easy. <laughs> it is not, it's not an easy rush system. <laughs> you, were just, yeah. you were the full package, right? <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, because let me tell you, the real truth is, I mean, Kyle and I guess Teddy have a bond, but so do Erica and Lisa. 
So I was like, maybe you guys could be buddies, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. like, we can do like we can bond together, and because she Garcelle is really cool, she's really funny. Um, I don't get the whole Kyle thing, but right. Denise has also been in the mix with everything that just happened. And there are so many comments in regards to the ladies versus Denise. And it, it has transformed into kind of like these Twitter wars where every single episode they're saying they're on Denise's side then they're saying some are saying they're on Kyle's side and that they still want to continue to see what ends up happening for the rest of the season. So Denise, after the award, she ends up leaving and she's like, bye, peace out. I'm done. I don't want to talk about what happened in Santa Barbara. I'm tired of having this conversation. Um, and so then after we see the scene with Denise and Aaron's dinner date, and Denise mentions that she's very hurt by Rena calling her a hypocrite and bringing up these, you know, Charlie Sheen moments of him bringing around hookers. And it's just, it's very sad to see a friendship kind of dwindle down and tear each other apart. I, I really want to pose a question like, what did we all think about this whole scene where Denise is showing like, hey, I, I feel really bad that Rena calls me out the way that she did. What do you think, Laura? You know, watching the episode back for the second time, um, <laughs> y'all are going to laugh at me, but I was really, um, I was on Denise's side. I really like, and, and I guess listening back to kind of hearing the two sides, hearing um, sort of the, the Kyle Renna camp saying, you know, well, on the one hand, she's so open and free about her sexuality. And, and then on the other hand, she's pretending to be holier than thou. And, you know, this kind of a mom that we all aren't. And, you know, watching it back, I guess I kind of, I watched maybe through my mom glasses the second time. And I, and I just was thinking, I have a, I have a way of conversation with my girlfriends that I don't show in front of my children. And it doesn't make me two different people and it doesn't make me a hypocrite and it doesn't make me trying to be a better mother than someone else. It's simply the fact that I think that there are some conversations that are reserved for adults that are not for children. And I think that's her, I think that's her prerogative. If she's trying to, you know, um, if she's trying to keep her kids as out of that kind of conversation, obviously it's gonna come up. I think what she has fought this season is she just wants control of that conversation of when it happens and how it happens. And she wants to, to be able to drive the narrative, not hearing it from you know her friends or her friend's friends. I think as the mom of the group, I think that's kind of what I was seeing. So I watched this episode back for the second time, really feeling for Denise. I was, I was team Denise on this one. I agree with you with everything that you've said. I think since the start, I've been on her side for, oh, Ethan, your face. It's like, I don't think so. <laughs> no, you're right. I feel well, for, for Denise. Well, I would agree with Laura and Maite and in, in the sense that she could keep that conversation separate from children. But the truth of the matter is her daughter is 15, right? And I feel like that's the age where you start to have those difficult conversations. I remember last time we were all together, we talked about having the talk. And I just feel like her child has reached the maturity level to be able to receive that information and not be hurt by it or confused by it. Like she's mature enough. But enough her dad has stage. grown up in the spotlight, you know, what it, the spotlight. And then as well, her dad has been in like this, you can easily search his name and find out so much information of him and his past and his current situation that is really hard for a 15 year old to understand. So her 15 year old is very different from like our 15 year old, right? Like if, if we were to grow up in, in that sort of scenario. So it's very, I think it's very different. What do you think, uh, Jane? I mean, I think last time I was going really hard on being like team Rinna and then Laura, with the mom factor made me realize that maybe I was being, you know, a little naive to all of the complexities of actually being a parent. So I'm still a little bit like the daughter's 15. She thought it was funny. 
I think that, you know, parents should be a little bit more open because my parents were so strict and I think there's no harm in joking about things. So I get where Rena's coming from, but I, I don't know. I, at the same time, I'm like, I feel for what Maite and, and Laura are saying and understand where Garcelle and Denise are coming from. So I think I'm leaning towards being a little more devilish on this one, but <laughs> I, I, I get, you know, I'm curious what you think, Seth. Well, I, I'm also a mother and I watched that episode with my kids, you know, who were not invited to, like nobody else's kids were invited to Denise's party. So that, you know, I think that, that is one telling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was very, Denise, I didn't think ever was trying to mom shame. I don't think that she was ever that upset about it, but for some reason she kept bringing it up. And so then the girls are going to be like, the, you can't, you can't keep talking about it unless it's, there must be an issue there. So this must be an issue for, for Denise. And I do think that I can't remember who said like, I think she's backtracking because she regrets the previous season, you know, and what she mm -hmm. said on camera about husband I think that there might be a little backtracking but I don't think that she was ever mom shaming anybody that was my personal opinion I don't think she was ever upset about that conversation um I was trying to I saw both sides I saw Lisa's side but then I also saw Denise really didn't care mm -hmm. it just, you know it it escalates it it you know it simmers in the pot so so my question is, why was she, why were no other children invited to the party? I guess it was just like a small, she didn't, there were other adults there and she just didn't invite like any of our kids. So it was like her, her kids and their friends. So interesting. So if you were to host, let's say a barbecue at, at your, in your home, um, would you have approached the situation as Denise did? No. I mean, look, it would take me two seconds. I'd be like, all right, and we're going inside. There is a movie <laughs> that's about to play and we are going to move the dessert bar inside and hustle on in. They don't need to be there for that. But that's just me. That's how I would have done it. Um, you know, Denise is different. and But then you can't complain about it later. Like, you can't do both. Either, like, once you hear these girls starting to talk about things like this, which, you know... Miss Polly Prude over here did not engage in that too much. <laughs> that's, well, not, Sutton, that's why that's why you're on Oprah. You're, that's why you're in good company with Oprah. <laughs> yes, on like Oprah had to list. talk about threesomes at the dinner table. This is not an appropriate conversation. <laughs> Party planner extraordinaire knows how to shut it down. You know, I, but I tell you when, but it is like girlfriends talking and sometimes you do get lost. I mean, I've done that before. I think like all of us mothers, we've all been put in a situation where maybe we're hanging out with our girlfriends and having wine. And then we're like, oh God, the kids are still here. Let's get, let's get them out. You know, I think we've all done that. We've all like misspoken and caught ourselves and that, you know, I don't know. No, I would have done it a little differently. I wouldn't have had them there to begin with because honestly, after eight o'clock, bah, kids. No that's problem. what feels confusing to me. And that's why I asked the question because if no other kids were invited and Denise's kids were allowed to be there, then all of a sudden it, it seems like they're invited to be a part of adult conversation. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that bad, was it? They're yeah. not like super young. Do you think that they're too young to be talking about threesomes? No, and they all they, they went out afterwards. Yeah, they, they go out like I was like, okay, they, they came for dinner. Now they're going out to be teenagers. Um, no, I, and honestly, the fact that I watched it with my kids, I didn't think there was anything to it. To be honest, yeah. No feel like it's two different conversations you guys mentioned Charlie Sheen's past and I feel like that's one conversation and then talking about threesomes is another conversation that I think they can handle Charlie Sheen like that's you know your relationship with him however you want to let your kids into his life but threesomes they're going to find out about you know in high school at some point well, plus it wasn't like Denise wasn't talking about threesomes 
her right. friends were. You know, it was yeah. like mommy, your friends, God. But she wasn't doing that, so I didn't. I, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. Right. Yeah. Also, as we were watching, we didn't think it was such a big deal, but the way that it got blown out of proportion and then the ladies kept bringing it up. I mean, Rena kept bringing it up constantly. And then Erica, right, with her side remarks, kept saying, you know, especially, uh, you know, Teddy kept saying how uncomfortable she felt and kept poking at, um, you know, just kept poking at the situation. And the ladies continued to do so during Kyle's barbecue. And, you know, that's where we found out as well that Denise, she mentioned something in the very beginning when they asked her for her kids. And she's like, yeah, two are at a sleepover. One is at a play date. Then later it comes out as they're seated, right? And she says, hey, you know what? I wouldn't bring my kids around. Like she sides whispers that to Garcelle. Uh, what did you all think about that specific moment? Because then came the moment about Aaron. And I want to ask you all, do you think Aaron should have gotten involved in the beginning? <laughs> no, I think Aaron should be banned from all dinners. <laughs> he should have learned his lesson already. So no, I don't think he should have. And, and also I think, you know, they kind of called him out on this delivery, but it did seem like he was being a little bit condescending. So I don't think it was, was um, addressed in the correct way coming from Aaron, but you know, I think he was trying to be sweet and jump in and protect her as her husband. But I think the way that it came off was not necessarily how he intended it. That's how I felt. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I didn't think it was really his place. Again, I think Teddy said it, but like know your audience when you bring up an argument like that because you're gonna get snapped at. Um, <laughs> I also felt that what Denise said showed her character in sort of a negative light because if she really is, you know, about um, being honest with these ladies about, you know, what the circumstances are for her kids, then she would just upfront tell Kyle, you know, I'm still uncomfortable. I, I don't want them here. Like, I understand that's hard to say, but like the truth always reveals itself, right? So I just felt like that was kind of an unattractive uh, look on Denise. Hmm. Sudden, I see you agreeing. Yes, no. <laughs> well, I think at Kyle's party, all of the children were invited. So I think it's ridiculous for Denise to say that she was like, she didn't want to bring her kids around the group. That's dumb because there was like a basketball court and a jumpy thing and a tent, you know, and, and the food was really like kid friendly food. So it didn't make any sense to me. I think, I think that was posturing and I, I don't think she meant it. I think that was a really weird thing to say. Um, Aaron, stay pretty, Aaron. Just stay pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, agreed, 100%. Okay. Y'all pretty, make an exit, but their exit was weird to me. <gasps> so oh. weird. And mm -hmm. I didn't want her to leave, but I thought it was weird. You know what struck me as even weirder was like Dorit just trailing behind. <laughs> like Dorit <laughs> was walking so slow because of her adorable outfit with the cute stilettos and like not really actually chasing after <laughs> Denise. She was just kind of walking. See -through. Yeah, her dress was completely see-through. It was like I it looked like a what swimsuit cover-up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're not really adding to this weird. like chase, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, Doreen always seems to post pictures as if a professional photographer has taken photos of her before every episode, like yeah. every single event. How is that? Well, I don't live with her. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's Boy George. Somebody's in there. Taking <laughs> I don't know. You know. I have to like beg my 13 year old, please, will you take the picture of me? I don't know, but yeah. That's yeah. what should make your kids uncomfortable at the barbecue, not <laughs> threesomes. <laughs> right? uh, yes, well, Aaron really did call out specifically Teddy and Teddy, right? Teddy and Kyle, those are just tag team. They both have each other's back. Um, Sudden, when you were introduced, right, to all of these ladies, did you think there was something weird about their friendship? Because I know we've talked about that before here. Yeah, no. I didn't think so at all. I'm a girl's girl, so I have really close girlfriends. So I didn't, 
honestly, there's a lot. I think you see me a lot going, <laughs> what are they talking about? Like, I didn't get it at all. I, I, mm -hmm. I, it's not like they were holding hands or like arm in arm, walking together. They, it, that's not how it is um, at all. So it's, I don't know if people are, I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Don't know. No clue. Can't help. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, right, we get more from, from this season. We did see the mid-season trailer, and Brandy makes an appearance, uh, and that seems to really amp up the drama for this season. But I, I do want to ask you, Sudden, what, did, what was your first impression of Brandy when you saw her, and what's to come for this season? Well, I've known Brandy for a few years, so I, you know... I know, I know a little of her. She's been to my house a couple of times for some parties. I've seen her out socially. And Brandy's a wild card, but she's not a bad person. Um, so I had, like, the second part of this season, I had no clue the bomb that was going to drop. A little. A little. Okay. a little a little you knew or a little? Yeah. <laughs> a little she knew a little she didn't know <laughs> what i say is i wasn't surprised when i learned about what brandy said i wasn't surprised at all it, like mm. it didn't surprise me mm. interesting yeah well we'll definitely have to keep watching for that because i can't wait to watch it are you kidding me <laughs> I know we're all so excited. My God, this, this interview is, is giving me more cliffhangers than the actual episode. Sutton. <laughs> You're it's so good. I'm loving it. <laughs> because I'm the clueless one. I'm always like, where? What are we doing now? I mean, I just do what they do. They put powder on. I put powder on. They get. I'm like, okay, now we're going here. I don't know what's going on. That's why I like place cards. I I want to know where. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know these people. Uh, and so far, has there been a moment, you know, these past eight episodes that really hasn't showcased your true character or have you received any feedback, negative feedback since you've been a housewife? Oh, well, we, we don't have time for the negative feedback. Um, no, I think, I think I, I can be a little bit shy and reserved at first when I meet people. And this isn't just meeting one person. It's, it was meeting seven People, well, I knew Lisa, but you know, it's a lot of people to meet. And also there were cameras around. So I think I was just reserved and I fell back on, on really old, like, I don't know, debutante habits um, to get through socially. And I think you see me get more and more comfortable. I mean, I think when I kind of shoved Kyle out of the way, like move it. And that's more me because I'm very um, casual with people and my friends and I love to joke around. Um, so I hope we get to see some more of that. I, we talked about this, Jane, um, like just hanging out with my kids is fun to see and we don't get to see that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, there's, all, there's lots of different sides to my personality. I, I like to say that um, they're diamonds for a reason. Diamonds are faceted and I think they want all of their housewives to show all the facets of their lives. So I'm sorry that we can't see that and hopefully we will be able to see more. But I mean, I, I think even now you see them more fun than I think I came across at first. Yes, definitely. That's a good time. That's what, it gets really serious sometimes with these girls. And right. There's a lot of things we don't see, right, that you yeah. experience. Yeah. Stress I think the other thing too is that you're not only you're not only learning the 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 women individually, but you're also learning the women as a group and the yep the dynamics within the group and it you know that's a tough name a tough thing to navigate because it seems to change from season to season and from episode to episode so I can only imagine how nerve-wracking that must have been to step into you're so right and it's a good it's a really good point because I didn't understand the dynamics I didn't know who didn't everybody likes each other none of us want to see anybody fail none of us want to see you know thrown in the mud at all but there are some um, personalities that are a bit more challenging to get along with. So you, it was sort of like, all right, let me just watch for a minute. And it was like my mm -hmm. daughter going to the first day of preschool. She was, her eyes were this big and she just has to like watch to figure out when she can come in 
And mm -hmm. I felt like I was like that for a while. <laughs> God, because don't you can't mess. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like a game of double dutch the whole time. Yeah. You're trying to decide what <laughs> yeah, you can get it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's really such great. a good point. I love the fact that you're able to emphasize on that because you know us viewers as we're watching, you're a new you know you're a new cast member, and so it's a little bit difficult to figure some cast members out. Uh, mm -hmm. So the fact that you're able to provide kind of like a background as to who you are that makes it more genuine, and we get to see a lot of you on social media. You're quite active on Instagram. I, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And we just saw that you were supporting Pride Month and All Black Lives Matter in the protest. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your, how that experience was for you being part of, of the march and the parade? Of course, no, it was, um, it took me, we had, my store had planned to do the Pride Parade and because it got canceled, we wanted to do something. And then, um, I was a, a bit reluctant at first because of the coronavirus. Like, you know, we've been really strict here in the house. And so I didn't quite know, but since things have been lifted a little bit, I thought this is a good time to do this and it's a good day to do it on. Um, and so, and I took my daughter and staff members and some friends and, um, and my boyfriend and we, we got to do it together as a group and I felt really safe. And I, I was so proud of America and the fact that we have the opportunity to speak out and insert our demand for civil rights. So it was just really, it was really a special, really moving day, I think for all of us. Mm -hmm. I would love to know what it was like to share that moment with your daughter. Yeah, it was fun because she brought a friend and so I was very nervous and because um, I want safety is first for these girls. Like you want them to be able to see it and experience it. But it was my first time experiencing something like this as well, because it hasn't happened in my lifetime, really either or not to this extent. Um, so we were kind of in it together, like getting to do it for the first time as a mother daughter team. So, you know, it's something that we will never forget. And how cool, and she didn't, I didn't ask her if she wanted to come, she asked me if she could come. So I'm like, I have done my job. She, <laughs> like, she's in this socially and she's so cool and smart. So it was very, huh. That's it was great. Awesome. And That's she's so sweet. From, from high school, right? Yeah, she just graduated. so. You know, she's going to be voting this year, too. So I think she's really in tune with everything that's going on. And I'm just really proud, you know, that she's listening and has a voice as well. And not just um, not just listening to rhetoric, but making her own decisions and making her own um, mind up about certain things. So, you know, that's all we can do as parents is um, teach and let them go and hope that they've they've got the backbone and the wherewithal and the brains to make good decisions. So it was a really, it was a really cool time to do with her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I watched when you were on Watch What Happens Live and Andy said, you know, it's, it's such a shame because you're so, you're such a good mother and that relationship with, you know, with your kids. And it's, it's something that he wishes uh, the audience would get to, to see. And you know, we don't get to see that. Do you think it's something that will maybe happen in the next season, if possible? You know, we just pray every night. We pray for peace and we pray that I get to show my family on television. Those are the two prayers that, that we lift up right now. But <laughs> no, I, mean, yeah, I, do. I mean, I hope so because I think um, my kids are great. They're funny and they're smart and um, we have a good rapport. And Andy got to see, we shot... Um, sort of like pre with the kids. So he got to see it. So I think that's what he was sort of alluding to. Um, and, and I think also that people will fall in love with my kids too, because they're great. Well, I think they're great. <laughs> so we hope. We fall in love with that part of, of you know, of every cast member. When we get Everybody. Yes. And we also want to see more of your closet. And there's been an instance in one of your shows that Ethan has worn a crown just oh, oh. for you. Oh, 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 o
Look, what? <laughs> do you feel instantly better? Oh my God, always. No, when I'm depressed, I'll literally put this on and like walk on. on. Wear your pajamas, <laughs> bathrobe and a tiara. Oh yeah. Together. I'm gonna get on for the rest of our show. Yeah. <laughs> You know, who needs have, Zoloft when you have diamonds? It, it's just better. We did. I had did a friend's birthday party on Zoom, and um, I wore a tiara for her, like a big one, almost like a crown. And just because it's funny and it's fun, it makes you feel better. And we're all in our pajamas, like sad that we can't see each other, and it just kind of brings a little ray of light. I know. I got to work my way up I'm to your level, but this is my starter. <laughs> <laughs> your starter tiara, my like starter your training tiara. wheels. Yep. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is there another staple that you have in your closet besides, you know, a tiara? It's a staple. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, so for example, like shoes, you have like a shoe collection or is there something um, that you just really shop a lot for? Well, I really like shoes because they always fit. So that's great. <laughs> and honestly, I love, I love to just like do a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and wear like a crazy good pair of shoes, mm. but it's, you know, and it, it just kind of makes you feel better and kind of zips it up. You don't always have to be dressed up, but the shoes, it, I think they give you like a, a boost of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I've been collecting shoes since I lived in New York, like the sex in the city days. And mm -hmm. in my first year, was a still have I'll bust out every now and then um, they're like little pieces of jewels for your feet I love them so much I might be a little bit of a shoe addict that and yeah I, I like jewelry that's always good yes and um one thing that we always talk about here too is Dorit and she has this deal with Buka have you visited her deal with Buka <laughs> 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 Any chance you can see the Buka and see what she's done with the place? I think we're going to get a chance to see it, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh my, my gosh. I'm going to get is it, is it as underwhelming in person as it is in pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just face. To, just see. I had never been there before, so, you know, I, I can't speak to what it used to look like and I just yeah mm -mm. Sutton you are Sutton. such a southern lady and I love it <laughs> Sutton <laughs> did you have an upset stomach after dinner at Luke and Buffalo <laughs> 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 it is with all the lemons you saw all around like what is this <laughs> Well, you know, like, I love Capri. First of all, let me just say that I love Capri. So I, um, and I, they're like, it's one of my favorite places to go in the world. So for me, not having been to Capri many times, it was maybe a little underwhelming, but perhaps <laughs> for those that have never been to Capri, that it gives you a sense of what the island is like. So you didn't necessarily feel like you were transported <laughs> to an Italian island. No, I didn't. <laughs> but the food, actually, the food was good. Oh, I don't, that's good. But, you know, I, I what what they had a cauliflower thing, like a um, some sort of fried cauliflower thing that was really it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. I can't even pronounce it, so I don't. The yeah. last time yeah. I was there, I had food poisoning, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of it. So, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. We did our research here as soon as we saw this episode. We were like, how does this look? Where is this place located? Which location did she transform? Like, we dug in deep. So, we can't wait to see this play out this season. At least give us like a little snippet of, of her reaction and the rest of the ladies' reaction to this. Well, I think <laughs> y'all are tough. Um, we, we actually went there right after we'd gotten back from Rome. So, oh, stop. Uh, the juxtaposition of that. Yes. And I so will say I did in my store um, a jewelry event with my dear friends um, who are from Capri. So I didn't know that this was planned 
months and months and months before. So um, I had a Capri inspired event at my store after Kyle's dinner. So that's oh. Kind of, yeah. So oh, is that going to be a four episode long drama point of contention? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. But it, um, we get, a, we, we get some Aaron and some of my friends are there. So that's always fun. Ooh, okay. Well, we're excited to see that and talking Me about, too. I haven't seen it. I don't know. It might not even make the cut. Who knows? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Fun. Um, Laura has a little game that she has constructed and wants to play. So Laura, do you want to take it away with this? Yes, I do. Okay. So really quickly, we recently heard I, a rumor and I know that it's not a true rumor, but for a minute, we all kind of freaked out about it, that there was a chance that Lori Laughlin was going to be added as a cast member to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We have since learned that that is not necessarily true, but we thought it would be really fun to play, hey, um, who would you like to see or who would you add? So I'm going to show you a series of pairs or tell you a series of pairs of celebrity women. And I would love for you to pick which one you think would be a better addition to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills franchise. Okay. The first pair is Cindy Crawford or Brooke Shields. Cindy. Cindy. Yeah, good choice. Okay. All yeah. right, second pair, Paris Hilton or Nicole Richie. Paris. Paris? Ooh. Is it simply because of the Kyle connection? No, I don't know. I've met her. She, I, she would be hilarious to watch. For sure. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love it. Okay, third pair, Jennifer Garner or Reese Witherspoon? I mean, they're great actresses. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not so great for reality pass, TV. Pass on the actresses. Pass on. <laughs> There's enough of them. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, then what about models? Let's see how you feel about models. Tyra Banks or Heidi Klum? I can't answer. You, you can't? I can now. You're good. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Tyra Banks or Heidi Klum? Model land. Where every time I go on vacation, Heidi Klum's in the same place. So she stalks <laughs> me. I'm gonna go with her. Well, great. She's already then great. She's she's uh she's a housewife by by proxy. We'll just add her in. <laughs> uh, all right. And then what about Brandy Glanville or Faye Resnick? Which would you rather see as a housewife? Faye. 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 What? Ooh. That did not even take a second. She was no. too good to do. Well, you because you, you want to get to know Faye more. Like, mm -hmm. what is going on in that brain? Mm -hmm. Yep, Rick, she's she's always, always her too. She has always been one that's uh, intrigued me. Okay, and then last one. I know, I know, the rumor has died, but Lori Laughlin or Felicity Huffman. Hmm. I would say I would only want Laurie to come on because I would like to give her my opinion of the whole thing. Ooh. Oh. I would like to watch that. So if we can make that happen with Bravo, let's go for it. Uh-huh. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get haters out there. No, I don't know. I just. Love it. I, I love it. it. like it. <laughs> well, I'm here. That's all I'm, I got to go, Ethan. Oh, yeah. I'm curious, Sutton. So you didn't have a tagline this season, but if you did, what would you say that tagline would be? Well, no, I told Andy that I thought that it should be that I have enough diamonds, but there's always room for one more. Oh, but that one's so I'm good. In, I'm in Southern Company. So the one that I also kind of liked that I thought would be funny was I may be Southern, but don't ring my bell. Oh, that's, a uh, that's great. Are you friends with any of the other housewife franchises like from New York, Orange County? No, you know, um, Bryn, Bryn Ward, she reached out to me and like welcomed me to the Bravo. She's really sweet. Um, 
do I know any? No, I knew Carol. I've met her before in New York and um, she came and sat at a table I did for American Ballet Theater. So I've met her, but um, I think that's it. No, mm -mm. that's a boring, sorry. No. <laughs> no, interesting. I'm actually normal. <laughs> right, right. I have had Alan Greenspan over to my house for dinner though. I think that's pretty good. Oh, that's Ooh. new. And talking about the housewives, Alan Greenspan, mini weeks, whatever. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for that, Sudden. This has been such a, such a fun interview we've had with you as well as a recap. We, as always, we appreciate you all tuning in here at AfterBuzz TV. If you are watching us on YouTube, please make sure you give us a like. Leave us your comments down below because we love to continue the conversation with you all. Um, and we thank you again, Sudden, for being here with us. We were overjoyed when we found out. fun accepted this and so we really thank you from the bottom of our hearts we're looking you're on the invite list all of you are on the invite list to the next party for sure yes <laughs> you are a tip to that one yeah it's a true <laughs> honor yes and before we say our goodbyes um just ethan do you want to take it away and let everybody know where they can find you on social media sure i'm at ethan b paisley on all platforms Laura, do you want to let everybody know? Yeah, all platforms. You can find me at Laura Thomas Son, S-O-N-N. -N. And Jane? You can find me on all socials at Jane Johnson, J-O-H-M-S-E-N underscore. Yes, and Sutton, please do us the honor and let everybody know where they can find you on social media. I, on Insta, I'm Sutton Strack, and on um, Twitter, which I'm learning. I'm Sutton B. Strack. I put my middle name. Somebody stole Sutton Strack. So I'm Sutton B. Strack. We what will is... take them down for you. <laughs> I'm in the same boat on Instagram. I have to put the middle initial. I know, my underscore. Oh, no, not an underscore. That is no. Mm -mm. You got to get rid of that. No. No Sutton. underscores. Oh, no. Sutton, I will worship whatever you tell me to do. <laughs> middle initial? Yeah, always. Go for it. Okay. Way to go. And I'm Mike DeCrio. You can find me on all social platforms at yeah. This Is Mike. Thank That's you. Underscore. <laughs> <laughs> no underscore. No underscore. She'll never let me live it down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you for Bye. Thanks for watching. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.